Okay, I apologize for my sloppy writing, so I'll read it to you. How to derive the compound interest formula. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start out with a, an example, and then we'll work from the example to try and um, apply it to all um, situations that deal with compound interest. So um, step one here, let's say grandma gives you a principal amount of 10 grand. She's got this gift to give you. Ten thousand um, dollars. She has invested it in something really cool that gives an interest rate of twelve percent or an APR. You know, kind of keep that in mind. APR is annual percentage rate. So every year, this investment uh, will increase by twelve percent. So that's your interest rate. And we're going to compound it quarterly. This particular one compounds quarterly, which is four times per year. For, let's just say, she tells you you have to leave it in there for at least one year. So we're going to calculate that compound interest um, for this situation. All right. So I've got this table here. And this would be our um, periods. Or compounding time, you know, our quarters. You know, you could probably put quarters there. And we got quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. This is the uh, amount in the bank. This will be amount in the bank. So in quarter one, we started with ten thousand dollars. This is our interest calculation. And uh, this will be our interest. And this last one is going to be our total at the end of the quarter. Okay. So our interest calculation, well, since the 12% is, uh, is an annual percentage rate, we have to divide that by the four quarters that we're dealing with. So we would have $10,000 times 0.12 divided by 4. Okay. Um, so that would be 0 0.03. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.03 all the way through. Each quarter, and if you add that those four quarters up, you'd end up with 12%. So 0 0.12 divided by 4 gives you the 0 0.03. You multiply that together, and you get three hundred dollars in interest for that first quarter so at the end of the first quarter we have ten thousand three hundred dollars worth of interest so that's going to be our new amount when we start quarter two so we've got ten thousand three hundred bucks and then uh, so we got ten thousand three hundred that fills in here times 0 0.03 gives us uh, $309 and you add you know the $309 interest at the end of the quarter to what we started the quarter with 10,300 and now we have at the end of the second quarter $10,609 so that's what we're gonna start the third quarter with $10,609 and so we're going to take that times 0.03. And so now we have $318. And notice our interest is growing in 27 each quarter because we're not touching the money at all. And we'd have $10,927.27. I'm rounding to the nearest penny at this point. And so that's what we start the beginning of the fourth quarter with. So 10,927.27. You do that same amount here, getting kind of lazy. And you got uh, $327.82. So at the end of the fourth quarter, we have a total of $11,255.09. If you round, round up to the nearest penny. And so that's how you compound, calculate compound interest with an actual problem. But there's a formula out there for compound interest, and it looks like this. 
So A equals P times 1 plus R over C to the CT. And how the heck do they come up with that? It's so easy to calculate, um, like what we just did, but how do they come up with this formula? And this formula works every time. We could have we went ahead and did that, so our amount, A is the amount of interest, or amount total we'd end up with. You plug in 10,000 for principal. 1 plus your rate is 0.12 divided by your compounds. Whoa, I was going to put another C there, but we know what C is. C is 4. And then to the 4 times, we only have one year of interest that we're doing this time. So 4 times 1 is 4. So you'd have 10,000 times 1.03 to the 4th power. And when you do 10,000 times 1.03 to the 4th power, you get um, 11,255.09. So $11,255.09. It's like .0881 or something like that. But you round it to the nearest penny. And that that is the compound interest formula. Well, how the heck do they come up with that thing? So here I have a table that's going to mimic kind of the same thing we just got done doing. And... Uh, and so we'll just we'll do the same thing. So this is your quarters. We'll call it Q. So one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. And then we'd have N. Because we want to know um, if we kept this going forever, you know, how, where would it end up at? And the uh, um, amount in the bank... You know, amount in the bank, we'll just call it P instead of 10,000. And we'll still do our interest calculation. We'll just call it interest. And then uh, um, we're going to have, I'll skip one and we'll just do total here. Because we're not going to actually get a number. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that'll work. So interest, our total will go here. And this last column is going to be for some algebra. <laughs> so we'll leave that kind of to do some extra work at the end. So some, a some little bit of magic there at the end. So hopefully it doesn't look like magic when I'm down here. But So if we start out with a principal amount, and, and we don't know what our rate is. We're just going to call our rate R. So that's our APR. We don't, you know, we don't know what it is. And uh, compoundings, we also don't know what those are. So we're going to call C will be our compounding. It could be anything. It could be yearly, uh, it could be, which would be 1. It could be quarterly, which is 4. It could be uh, monthly, which is 12. It could be biannually. It could be uh, daily, which would be 365. You know, We can make it whatever we want it to be. And so we'll calculate it just like we did before. So notice if we went up here to this actual problem, we took 10,000, which is our P, times 0.12 divided by 4. So we took our rate divided by our compounds. So we'll go ahead and do that. So principal times um, rate divided by compounds. That is our interest. So our total would be um, P plus that amount, that interest amount, P times R over C. Okay. Now, like I said, this last column is like for, is for algebra. And I want you to take a look at this. And you got to remember something way back in your algebra career with, uh, with uh, um, distribution. Notice you've got a P both here and here. So we can use the distributive property and factor that P out. And so you would have P and then 1 plus R over C. Hmm, kind of looks familiar. So that's what we start our new quarter with. So now on the second quarter, and I'll go back to blue. Nope, we don't run out of time. We'd have P times 1 plus R over C. And to get our interest, we'd take that amount, P times 1 plus R over C times that whole thing times R over C, which is our interest. It was 0.03 up above, but in our case, it's R over C each time. And 
Then you add those for the total. You add your first amount, which is P times 1 plus R over C, plus what we just calculated, which is P times 1 plus R over C times R over C. So we're running out of room. Now, notice that we have the same situation, but it's a little more complex. We have 1 plus R over C times P in two places. So we'll factor that out. And so we would have P times 1 plus R over C. And you'd be left with, if you take P out of this one right here, if you take P times 1, over, 1 plus R over C out of that, you end up with 1, just like when we took a P out of P here, we ended up with just 1 here. We have 1 plus this R over C that's kind of out here on the end. Well, notice that happens twice. So it's squared. So you would have, for your new amount in the bank, if you simplify that, P plus 1, or P times 1 plus R over C to the second power, because there are two of them. And then you do, to calculate your interest, you take that P times 1 plus R over C to the second power times R over C. And now it's going to get really crazy because you're going to add these two together. And so you add your initial amount, which is P times 1 plus R over C squared plus your interest, P times 1 plus R over C squared times R over C, and you're going to factor it out. And I'm running out of time, so I better hurry. So again, factor out the P plus 1, P times 1 plus R over C squared out of each, because notice it's the same in both, both chunks there. So I'm kind of running out of room, so I'm going to put it down here so I have a little bit of room to play around with. And so P times 1 plus r over c squared. We're factoring that out. And notice what's left. Right here, that's right, it'd be a 1. Exciting. Plus, this again, you factored it out, so you're left with the r over c. So, um, one, two, three, yes. So, so when we ended our third year, and um, let me put that before we get into N here. So when we ended our third year, we ended with P times 1 plus R over C to the third compound. And, and that's how many compoundings we have. So you're starting to see this. So N is our number of compoundings. So if you kept going with this thing to n, you know, you could just continually do that. And granted, we're not using math induction or anything fancy to prove this, but so we'll make a huge leap <laughs> into the L n realm plus r over c because I'm running out of time. But so you've got that p plus r over c to the n. Well, what is n? Well, n is our compounds. Well, since it's quarterly, we took it you know, our quarters was, uh, we had four quarters for every year. So this N, it's not too big of a stretch to, we know N has to be, N has to be our number of compounds times the number of years that we're dealing with. So four times, you know, one in our case. Um, if it was quarterly, it would be, you know, if you had four compounds, or sorry, not for quarterly, we already did quarterly. Let's say it was daily, you'd have 365 days in a year times T. Just depends on what it is. So we can go ahead then and make that leap in, and say the our N is CT. And so there is the derived formula. Not perfect by any means, but in a... Uh, 14 minutes, uh, that's what I can do. <laughs> so, best of luck with this stuff. Um, I just, I love deriving formulas when they, when they work out like this. So, good luck. See you next time.